Candace, what's going on? How can I help? A few weeks ago, I found out about my husband's porn addiction um, that he's been keeping a secret for our entire relationship. How long have you all been together? Um, married for three, together for six. Okay. Um, he has been addicted since he was 12. Okay. Um, and I, I just want to know how to establish trust going forward and how to help him overcome this addiction. So one, I'm sorry that you just discovered this. How'd you figure it out? How'd you discover it? Um, I actually had a dream about it and... I confronted him about my dream, and he was like, what the heck, and came clean about everything. <laughs> yeah, because he realized, oh, God, I'm married to a sorcerer. This is not going to end well for me, right? <laughs> um, so yeah. you, you had a dream, and it, you just thought, well, I think my husband's got some addiction challenges, and then you just asked him about it, and he's like, I mean, uh-oh, busted. I didn't believe the dream. Like, I thought it was just a random dream, but I was like, hey, I had this dream, but it's kind of weird. And then he, yeah. Wow. It hmm. came true. <laughs> so how'd that, how'd the conversation go? Tell me about how that conversation went. Um, he, at first kind of like made it seem like it wasn't as much of a big deal. Like he was kind of denying it at first, but then he eventually, um, just started I don't know. It's I, I let's see. Cuz he he was like asleep and then he woke up and he was kind of groggy and then he he finally started telling me like yeah, this yeah, I've been watching porn like for a long time and he made it sound like it was like every like few months but then he actually said it's more like weekly Mm -hmm. so um tell me what what was going on in your heart were you just devastated did you kind of know already or was it did it answer a lot of questions for you was it weird were you more annoyed that he's been keeping secrets from you what what was what's going on in your in your soul Like, all of the above. Like, at first, I was completely shocked. I had no idea. Um, I thought we were, like, the couple that never had to deal with that type of thing. Mm. So it was shock and hurt. Um, But as he started telling me more and more, I also felt empathy towards him because he's been keeping it a secret for so long, and he doesn't want to be doing this. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't know how to get out of it, you know? Yeah, so uh, here's the the good news and the bad news. The bad news is you can't make him do anything. He's going to have to decide that he wants to change whatever behavior it is. Um, anytime we I, I talk to folks about addictive behaviors... Um, I always want to make sure we're talking about it at a 30,000 foot view. And so addiction is addiction is addiction. And some people use pornography and sleep around. Some people use heroin and some people work 90 hours a week. And some people are addicted to being right. They're addicted to power and to bossing the people around. Addiction is addiction is addiction. And the chemicals involved are very similar. And for some folks, um, Pornography is not that big of a deal for other folks. It's devastating in their soul. And so he, who he is married to, which is you, right? Y'all are going to have to sit down and have an honest, not groggy conversation, not a hem hawy conversation, but a direct conversation about how this particular behavior makes you feel. And you're going to have to have a specific conversation about what the violation feels like, and you're going to have to do some work on your own to decide, to, to kind of divvy up here. Is it the secrets that broke your heart? Is it the fact that he's been struggling with something for six years and he's kept that from you? Or is it the actual, he is looking at naked people and he is um, thinking about other people that are not me, right? And it's probably, like you said, it's, it's a mixture of all of that. What I'll tell you is, it's been my experience that the deepest pain 
underneath all those layers is the deception and the fact that you weren't worthy enough to be trusted with a hurt he had, especially for that long, right? That's hard. Um, is that overcomable? For sure. 1,000 million percent, yes. Okay. Um, what you're going to have to do is be honest with him about your feelings. And even if it's not all parsed out at the beginning, if it's a jumbled mess, um, still sit down and be honest with him. And you may have already done this. If you haven't, please take the time to write out how you feel. Get all those feelings down so that they're, you can see them laid out. They're in an order. And then I want you to draw your boundaries pretty firmly. Here's what I won't accept in my house. Here's what I won't tolerate in the house. Um, and here's who I expect the, the man that I'm married to be. And then he's going to have to make some decisions. And um, this can be a challenging thing. And this can be a not challenging thing. This can be just some hard decisions he's got to make. And then y'all are going to work together. And then this is just going to be a story. This is just going to be a footnote in the history of your relationship moving forward. Um, and so I don't want to undermine it and I don't want to over sensationalize it. I want to get right direct in the middle of it and deal with it directly. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. What I'll tell you is tiptoeing around, holding him hostage with you, right? Um, mm -hmm. Addiction at the end of the day is a connection disorder, right? It is people trying to fill voids, relational voids with stuff, with things, with other chemical processes that are cheap chemical substitutes for the chemicals we get when we are connected with other people. And so when folks use harsh, uh, you, they weaponize certain things, man, it just makes things worse. And so all that to say is be vulnerable with him, be clear with him, set really firm boundaries with him, um, love him, he's your husband, love him, walk alongside him, but you can't do the work for him. He's going to have to make some hard decisions. By the way, here's what some hard decisions might look like, that he doesn't have a computer in the house that he's got to go through you for the Netflix login, that um, he has, you know, there's a number of web filters that will send you everything that he goes to and looks at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that you've got unfettered access to his phone. It's going to depend on how serious he is about taking care of himself, okay, and, and keeping your relationship in a good, healthy place. Um, and then you may, as part of this vulnerability conversation, he may talk to you about some things that he struggled with you over the last six or seven years. And y'all will have to be able to hear that and heal your relationship from the floor up, right? And so this is a 360 degree conversation moving forward, but all you can control is you. You can't do the hard work for him. And, but I do want you to keep the light on in this relationship, man, because there's a lot of hope at the end of this thing, okay? Okay. So, yeah. so you've known him for six years, do you believe him that he wants to stay married, that he wants to have a whole relationship, a whole connection with you, that he wants to be plugged in and make this thing work? I do, yeah. He okay. is committed to seeing a counselor and figuring out, like, how deep this goes. Yeah. So there's, there's the spelunking expeditions, there's the seeing how deep it goes, and then there's the really, um, there's the simple behavior stuff, right? we need some strategies pretty quick, right? Like if he was an alcoholic, we wouldn't have alcohol in the house and you would commit to not drinking around him. And when friends came over, you'd let them know, Hey guys, don't bring beer over to the house. Don't bring whiskey over to the house because, um, because husband's getting clean. Right. Or if he was addicted to working too much or addicted to being busy all the time, you'd set some pretty, y'all two would co-create some boundaries together on, when at six o'clock, I'm coming home no matter what. And if I lose my job, I lose my job, but I'm going to start learning how to invest in my family, learn how to be at home. And so this is similar to that. There's some deep stuff. You got to get to the roots and all that stuff, but there's also some just behavioral issues that y'all can address right away together. And if it helps to go to the therapist with them, go to a counselor with them and y'all learn some new strategies together, that would be awesome. That'd be good. Um, do you want to stay married to this dude? I do. Yeah. Are you I'm sure? Committed. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because I hear, I hear, there's just something, there's a, I'm trying to think what it is. There's a sense of resignation in your voice. And it may just be because you're nervous because you're on the radio, but there's a sense of resignation in your voice. Um, if he's in and you're in, I want you to be all fully in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Someone who's a true addict knows when somebody's not being fully present with them. And that's what you go chasing, that full presence, okay? 
Okay. Do you feel good about that? Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So tonight, uh, maybe not tonight. Tonight, I want you to take time writing this letter, uh, writing out, here's all of my feelings on this. And a couple, again, a couple of places to start, I've already mentioned this, is just the sexual ethic violation. If this violated a, com- a commitment y'all had with one another, man, call that out. Um, if this, you're hurt because he kept, he was hurting for six years and he kept that a secret from you, man, call that out. If you are devastated by the secrecy and the deception and the lying, call that out. You sh- all, those, all those things should be, right? Um, and if there's more to it than that, put everything out in an orderly way. Let him know how you feel, not in a shameful way, but in an honest, direct way. That's you being vulnerable. And hear him as he responds, as he, as he um, gives it back to you. And I've got high hopes for your relationship. I want you to let me know how that conversation goes with him. Um, and again, if both of y'all are all in, y'all have a bright future together, Candace. Um, and we'll be thinking about y'all.